Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, bringing you another SQL tutorial, and this time we're looking at Identity Insert. Don't forget, if you do like the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you are new to the channel, I produce videos on SQL development, business intelligence, and administration. Uh, some of my most popular videos at the moment are SQL tutorials on Coalesce's null, creating table with constraints, and an SSIS tutorial on import and export wizard. And there is a, an associated video as well. So if you're interested in the identity property and the difference with sequence objects, go and check out that video. I will leave the links in the description below and also let me know what videos you guys want to see in the comments below so in this video we're going to be looking at identity insert now you may have been working with SQL Server for some time and never come across identity insert you're probably familiar with the identity property on a column Identity insert allows us to insert a value into an identity column. So we're going to go over some examples shortly. So the syntax for that is we set identity insert table on. We run our insert statement and then we set our identity insert off as well. So we're going to go ahead over to SQL Server Management Studio now and go through some examples. If you're not familiar with the identity property of a column, uh, it allows us to set a column to auto generate values for us. So, particularly on an identity column, uh, we could set that to auto generate integers for us to save us inserting any data into the ID column. So, that saves um, space for us and it improves manageability as well. That the database automatically generates that for us. Now, if you want to check if the identity property is set on a certain column, there are a couple of ways to do that, which we'll quickly go through. So we're going to be looking at my sales database, and I've only got a couple of tables in here at the moment, so I've just opened that up in Object Explorer. And if I open up the sales details table and look at the columns, I've got this sales details ID. Now, if I just right click here and go to properties, there is a property called identity which is set to true. So the identity property is set on this column. And we can see also the identity seed is one. So that would be the number that that started with as soon as I set that value. And it also increments by one. So it doesn't have to be, you could set the identity seed as a million and you could increase that by. 10 every time you wanted to that's completely up to you typically uh, within a database we'd have the seed set as one and we'd increment by one as well it doesn't have to be positive either it can be negative so you could set that as one and then it could go to minus one as long as that is a valid value within your data type now another way to check that is we could query one of the system tables uh, sys.columns so if I just execute a query against that, that this holds a lot of information against each column. So we can see in here whether a column's nullable, the length of the column. Uh, what we're going to do is just filter by uh, table. So I'm just going to set the object ID to the object ID of our table, which is sales underscore details. And we'll just indicate that's an underlying table as well. So if I go ahead and execute that, that will limit it to the columns that we've got within our table. And at the top we can see we've got sales details ID. And if I just run along there to a column called is identity, we can see that that's just a simple flag and it's set as true. So we know that the identity property is set against this column. So that's a couple of ways you can check if the identity property is set against a certain column. Now we're going to move on to having a look at identity insert and what we could use it for. So I'm just going to run a query to select all data from our sales details table. So in here we can see we've got our sales details ID, which is the column we're going to be working with. Uh, we've got a sales ID, sales date, item price, quantity and line total, uh, which is a computed column. So that's not going to be part of the insert statement we're going to be looking at today because that's automatically generated for us. As soon as we insert the price and quantity, it automatically computes that value for us. 
So let's think of a couple of examples where we want to insert a certain value into that column. Uh, we may have had a bug in the system and we may have skipped a value. We would probably reseed that value, but it may just be one and we're just going to insert a dummy value to take that place. We may be working on migration from another database and we may want to keep all the primary keys the same because they relate to other data in other tables. So it's very important that we insert that into the tables correctly. So let's just have a look at what our maximum value is for our sales details ID. So I'll just run a max that query. So it's currently at 55. So if I was to insert a new row without indicating the sales details ID, I would expect that to be inserted at 56. So let's go ahead and write an insert statement. Let's say in this table we need to insert a sales detail ID of 100. And I'm just going to explicitly state the columns here. Um, just so within our value statement we know which one each value is going to. So I don't need to indicate line total as I mentioned before. Uh, so values, let's say 100 just to make it easy. Sales ID, uh, current timestamp. By the way guys, do you know the difference between current timestamp and get date? Enter your answers in the comments below. Let's see who knows the difference between those two. Um, we'll say item 54, which is £4.50, and quantity 3. So now I'm trying to insert a value into the sales details ID. So if I go ahead and highlight this statement now and click execute, we get an error to say we cannot insert explicit value for an identity column. And that is where the syntax comes along earlier that uh, I mentioned as part of the presentation. So what we need to do is for this table, we need to set, if I can spell, identity underscore insert, still can't spell, sales details on. So we're going to set our identity insert on, identity insert pretty self-explanatory once you understand the identity property. So we're going to go ahead and execute that now and I'm going to run an insert into this table where I indicate the value for the identity column. So I'm just going to go ahead and execute that now. We can see we've got one row affected. I'm going to run a select all and I'm just going to scroll down because there's not many rows and we can see our sales details ID has been inserted as 100 as we would have expected. Now what's very important is once you've finished inserting your identities which I'll demonstrate shortly is that we must set the identity insert property to off so I'm just going to indicate that's off go ahead and highlight that and execute that query. Now I'm just going to run a, another insert, so we'll just run a select all from sales details again. Um, we've got our sales ID of 55, which was our previous, and then we explicitly inserted the value of 100. So now we've got identity insert set to off, we can't insert into the sales details ID column. That would be generated for us. Now, if you are going to be looking at the SQL Server certifications, this will definitely be there'll definitely be a question in this area. I remember because I had it myself. So, if I was to go ahead and run another insert now into this table, what would the next value be in the sales details ID? Enter your answers in the comments box below. Now I'm going to be sneaky and not actually reveal the answer, but if you do enter that within the comments below, I will come back to you. Now we're going to talk about something that isn't really mentioned, so a lot of people know that they need to set identity insert on to explicitly insert a value into the identity column. But why is it important to set identity insert off? We're going to have a look at that now. So if I set this back to on, so I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that and execute it. 
and now I want to run this insert statement and I'm not going to indicate that I'm going to be inserting a value into sales details ID. So typically if you've got store procedures inserted into this table you probably won't be setting an identity insert on, inserting the values and then setting it off within the store procedure. This is something you'll tend to do as a one-off or within a script you need to run. So I'm going to go ahead and run this insert statement now and we'll see we get an error. So now we've got it set to on, we must give it a value. So we must insert a value into that column. If we don't, we'll get an error. So say if we've got a table uh, such as this one and we've got a store procedure that runs inserts as normal, the identity column is automatically generated for us. We then need to actually insert a value ourselves, so we go ahead and do that. We forget to set the identity insert off. Next time that store procedure runs, it's going to return an error. And unless the error message is returned as part of the store procedure, it'd probably take a bit of digging to work out why that error is actually occurring. So while I remember, I'm going to go ahead and set that to off. And if you're unsure, you can just keep running that statement. It doesn't matter. It won't affect anything at all. I hope you have enjoyed that video. I enjoy making the videos myself, and I do want to grow this channel as big as possible. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and click that notification button to be made aware of when I do upload videos. Like I say, I mainly focus on SQL development, business intelligence, um, we'll do some Excel videos as well, and some of the administration side of SQL Server as well. Check out my other videos on the channel, there is a lot of good content on there, and thanks a lot for watching.